Okay, so I want to try to go over the Terran units. After the tech shoot video, I feel like there's still a lot to be said about how the game works. Just like simple things that like just that how like literally how the game works even without talking about strategies and stuff um it's just not there i think uh if you're just looking at the game you don't realize the differences between the races and uh i think going over the units is going to help uh uncover some of this stuff so the scv here is the terran warrior unit and uh you see each unit has uh, their types and uh, depending on their type um, so as an example these guys are light biological mechanical so biological things in Terran can be healed by the medevac this heals biological units um, it's the only thing that does that so anything biological this thing can heal just with its ray beam it just like sits there and heals stuff as long as it has energy uh, mechanical things can be repaired by the SCV so anything that's mechanical you can use the SCV to repair it and that includes buildings um, when it comes to building stuff the SCV it sits there and it literally builds the building so when you're building something like this as Terran the SCV needs to be there building it for the whole time and then if the SCV dies while building the building the the building's halfway done you can put another SCV on it um, this is it's unique to like each race because in Zerg actually you gotta the drone becomes the building it like morphs into the ground and then it starts building itself but you lose the drone and Protoss all you need to do is the, the probe like warps in the building it taps like the fucking warp space time fabric and then the building starts building by itself and the probe is free to do whatever else it wants um the mule here is something that's summoned through the uh i guess you won't see it here it's summoned through the orbital command so here's the orbital command Overall command, you'll see we'll upgrade the command center into over command every single game. And uh, that gives us the ability to summon mules and also scan. So scan reveals invisible units. Um, invisible units, you can't hit them unless you see them. So there's certain units that detect invisible units. There's certain structures that detect invisible units. And there's also the scan. Um, and these mules, so the energy from the orbital command lets us summon mules or scan and uh, mules increase your economy for a certain period of time you see they last 64 seconds and they mine better than SCVs then SCVs mine stuff if we didn't say that already uh, marines come from the barracks of the Terran these things are widely used they attack both air and ground which is just good and uh their dps is pretty good their rate of fire is decent and just in groups they do pretty good damage you notice how there's a weak against and strong against here so units like you when you build units you're building for a certain purpose and if you see the guy has some sort of units you'll have an idea like what units you want to build to do well against the units that he's building so marines we could, say it's, we could say their weakness here what's all these what's something all these have in common is that they do aoe so marines are cheap but in groups you'll just like slap them with aoe so siege tanks when they siege up aoe damage mainly's explode aoe damage colossus is a uh, big ass laser aoe damage It's also worth noting that units have abilities that you can research. Sometimes they come with them, sometimes you gotta research them. Um, Marines have a stim pack, which you gotta research at a tech lab, which is connected to the barracks. You need a tech lab on the barracks, and it uh, lets you research stim pack. The stim packs 
even some marines and marauders actually research it and uh, it lets them kill themselves but then they get like this super big boost so this is actually where most of their marine damage will usually come from is they lose 10 HP they start running really fast they shoot really fast big damage and uh, the tech lab also gives you this research combat shield which is 10 life um, something here also is that you notice that each unit has their armor and their damage dealing thing um, sometimes they have multiple damage dealing things let's see here we got Thor with multiple so they have a different attack for air and ground and each of these not each but armor and weapon can be upgraded so for Terran if we want to upgrade let's say armor and damage of our infantry unit we use the engineering bay and they go up to plus three and it's different the damage you gain from each upgrade is different for each unit but uh, so for example if I upgrade plus one just like plus one in general for infantry the the marine might not get this, the same plus one damage as the marauder or the reaper because uh, plus one damage universally would be like plus one off of six versus plus one off of ten is different. So it is different, but uh, it increases the damage of your infantry unit. Armor of uh, armor and damage of infantry is off engineering bay. Armor and damage off of mech and uh, starport units. All these mechanical units off the armory um fusion core actually gives you some skills abilities for uh these units here but you can you can guess that the tech lab on each of these guys gives you more abilities the armory is more for upgrades the fusion core gives you abilities we'll see the abilities here as we go through units um reapers are fast units, scouting units, they can provide early pressure for Terran. Um, they cost gas, so Marines don't cost gas. Marines are 50 minerals, Reapers are 50 minerals, 50 gas. So if you start pushing early with Reapers and you want to get this early pressure, you're going to get early gas. Uh, they do extra damage versus light units. Oh, I guess they don't. They, I'm pretty sure they used to do early damage, extra damage versus light units. Um, you'll notice these aren't there for no reason. Like here, if you're armored, marauders do more damage to you. So that plays into your countering thing. Um, Reapers can jump up and down cliffs. So it's like a f they're not a flying unit, but flying units ignore terrain. Reapers so ignore terrain. Um, and they regen. So you can hop in, try to like poke them, hop out, wait a bit, and go back in. It can get really annoying because they they just heal by themselves. Uh, you'll see you'll see reapers. Like the first thing you probably build up are racks is reapers. So you can go and check, scout their base. Marines you'll see a lot during turn. I think I've said that. Marauders you'll see less of. I think it was more popular before. But nowadays, uh, you can see they're good against the uh, armored guys. So if you're facing maybe Protoss, Protoss has a lot of armored units. Maybe not as much against Zerg. But uh, it, it's not an infantry unit. It'll probably work a lot with Marines. Just uh, that's what they call biological. Sort of army, um, Marines, Marauders, get some medevacs in there, and that's a decent army. Ghosts, you'll see less often. You see, they have a lot of abilities, they do a lot of different shit, but uh, they're more expensive and they're, they're very niche. They do high damage against a single target, but they're squishy. So, in our army, it's 
Eh, you don't really want too many of them, but you might pick them up for their abilities. So these abilities, I wouldn't even know all of them, considering there's nukes. Nukes, you need the building. So uh, the nuke building goes to Academy, then it goes to Academy. You can uh, build a nuke in there. Once you have a nuke, you can shoot it. But it takes time and then it like alerts the person. But they gotta find out where the nuke is dropping. And they can move their stuff. But they can't move buildings. Uh, there's an M EMP. And you see it reduces energy and shield. So it's good against other units that are trying to cast stuff. You can see that. All of these guys. And uh, also good against Protoss. Because Protoss units have shield. Um, all Protoss units have shield, and shields regenerate over time. Like they have a half of our shield, half of our HP. Their HP doesn't regen, but their shield does regen. So you can lose your shield, back off, come back, have your shield regen, and it's free hit points. But you can see they're sitting weak against a lot of stuff. These are like pretty standard armored units so they're good against light but not as much damage against armored units and they'll just blast them one shot uh, so we know that infantry come with the racks here's the mech units um, the hellion is a super fast unit that does uh, aoe damage so these are really good at you'll see the most during uh, early harass you'll build like a few of these you'll freaking run in look for their drones and just you know, weed them down the drones are light units and they do actually damage against light you can just zoom in or maybe drop them into your base using medevac pick them up drop them and try to kill their drones with this thing you also see it in maybe mech mech armies so turns like two basic armies infantry army or bio army or mech army so lots of marines and marauders or lots of hellions hushlings and thors um that's what these guys do uh the hellbat here actually transforms off the hellion you gotta research it or um, how do we get it we gotta get the armory um I think the damage is a bit easier to control, it's a bit more consistent, it's pretty good. It's better at just fighting instead of like rundowns, but the range is shorter and uh, it's not as fast. The Widow Mine's unique, it's pretty cool. You gotta, it doesn't attack by itself. <laughs> well, it does attack by itself, but it doesn't just normally attack like other units, it goes into the floor. And then once it's burrowed, then it's able to shoot a missile that's massive AOE damage. And then it has to recharge until it can do that again. So you can see it's good against like these weak units that can get one shot by this thing. And uh, that clump up. Yeah. Um They siege up. By itself, it's already pretty good. It's decent. They can walk around and just shoot, boom, 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 or they can transform, immobile, and then they shoot longer range. I don't think they can shoot right beside themselves though, and they do AOE damage. So you can see they're good against like groups of stuff here, and which they are range, but they can't shoot air. So they're weak against air. Uh, we should look at what can and can't shoot air. Marines can shoot air. Reapers cannot shoot air. Marauders cannot shoot air. Ghosts can shoot air. Hellions cannot shoot air. And uh, Hellbats cannot shoot air. These guys can shoot air. You see the oracles here. Well, the Cyclone is also a pretty funny unit like the widow mine these guys they have this ability that lets them lock onto a unit 
like buildings as well and they can just you can move around and it'll just keep shooting it as long as it's in range and it does pretty good damage so like it's pretty good at kiting honestly and like running down buildings if you have a group of these and you go up to someone's expansion to your second third base click on it and then they sort of chase you but you run away and you're still hitting their building and you just take down their building and run away pretty cool armored units so it's good against like it's probably worse against these smaller units because you're not going to lock onto every single unit but it's good against units that have decent amount of hp you can gun them down run away and uh these other guys you'll have more trouble killing and they'll sort of kill you faster Thor is this massive mech unit um they're good they have aoe air damage so if you have groups of stuff groups of air units you can actually do a lot of damage a lot of damage to them um Aside from that, they do like really big on hit single target damage, but then again, you'll get run over by a lot of small units as Thor. Uh, moving on to the air units Viking, you'll see if Terran is trying to get air control or control the air. So, any other air unit that the other races or your opponent makes. Because you could be fighting on our turn too, actually. You'll be making Vikings. Like, this is the go to anti air. As an air guy, so you see all these air units. Vikings, what you want to build against them. Um, but they can only hit air when they're in air mode, but they can transform into ground mode. So they just, like, do this transformer thing, drop onto the floor, and then they can hit only ground units when they're transformed to being on the ground. Um, I see these guys, these are ground units that hit air, so that's what would be good to kill them. Um, medivacs, medivacs heal biological units, but they also, they can also transport people. So you can pick people up, drop them down, and that makes them really good. You can try to like pop into someone's base, drop some units in there, do some damage, run away. Or just getting around the map in general is really good. Uh, liberators. So liberators, without their abilities, they can only attack air. But they have this thing that lets them draw this circle on the floor. And anything that goes into that circle, they can shoot at. And it does a lot of damage. But they, they have to like take time to put the circle on the floor and bring it out. But... So it's good, it's almost like a siege tank where you're like marking, you become immobile, but you secure this area, but it's an air unit. And then when it does this circle thing, it attacks ground units. Raven, Raven's almost like an air ghost. It has a lot of abilities, but it's a detector as well. The ghost is not a detector. Raven's a detector. So it sees invisible units and uh, that's like one of the main things in the Raven. They also drop uh, they have these abilities. They drop turrets that just do damage, which is not to be underestimated. Uh, they can like stun stuff, right? So actually, you'll see this a lot. And I think in Terran versus Terran, like you have two balls of sea shanks, and you're like shit. The enemy has siege tanks, has siege tanks, how do you move forward? These guys can stun the siege tanks and allow you to move forward. Uh, and you got this missile. Battle cruiser. I love the battle cruiser. It's the biggest air unit for turn. And uh shoot both air and ground. The thing is about the Galactus is that they come with this new skill. Well, I say new because 
back when the game came out they didn't have this skill it lets them hop anywhere on the map anywhere on the map so you spawn one you can just hop straight into enemy base and start killing them uh, your, your damage is good I don't think it's amazing but the mobility is great or you can walk into their base shoot stuff and once your Valkyrie stops dying starts dying just jump back home it's great it's, uh, they're weak against anti-air because they're air unit or other air units that are like superior air units that shoot only air uh Yamato cannon something you can research yeah it's a it's an on hit click charges for a bit and does massive damage banshees are this harassing air unit that you can build out of the starport with attack lab they can cloak us so they get invisible and if they don't have detection you can do pretty big damage with it but they're they're more squishy their air unit this pretty good damage against only ground units. Planetary Forces is actually the other upgrade that comes out of the command center. So we could do the overall command or we could do the Planetary Fortress. Planetary Fortress shoots stuff. So it's good for like a base that's further out. And then if it really needs to like defend itself. Planetary Fortress. Because then you lose the capabilities of the scan and the mules that you really want in your base but now you have this cannon which is useful for that fourth maybe third base now once you make a planetary fortress they can't actually lift off anymore their structures can lift off and move them around that's what lets you like swap add-ons sometimes if you want to build a rack you build a reactor and then you're like you're building your next factory and then right when the factory is finished you can lift the barracks and lift the factory put the barracks on the reactor that you made from your rack so you don't have to build the factory and then build a reactor on top of that factory too you can just swap them and you already have a reactor on your factory and put out like two hellions real quick and try to go for their drones But uh, the point is, the Planetary Fortress doesn't lift off anymore. Whereas everything else does. Pretty much everything. I don't know if these guys lift off. These guys might lift off the, the normal things do. The bunker is a. I don't know why this is a unit. The building and you can put your infantry in it and they fight from inside so you, you can put like a lot of marine four marines in here and uh you can shoot people but they can't shoot you because they're shooting the bunker and if the bunker does start dying you can repair the bunker and you, they basically can't kill your marines because you're repairing the bunker and they're it's tough to get by the mister is something you can build after the engineering bay it's anti-air structure. It sits there, shoots air. You can put it behind or near your workers, and so if someone tries to come and harasses you with like a banshee or that sort of thing, uh, it'll repel them away because it's shooting them. The auditory comes from the raven. That's the ability. Gives you a fair amount of damage, 18 damage on air and ground units. Something you can drop near their workers too and try to kill them. Pretty much it. I think we we've went through a good amount of stuff. Uh, if you feel like we should go over Protoss and Zerg units, let me know. But we're playing turn, so I thought it's worth it to go over this. As we fight people, we'll we'll realize what we should do against each of them as a turn, and uh, what their strengths and weaknesses are. But that's that.